here's a great question dealing with the atonement of Jesus Christ. <coughs> Julia in Utah asked, What exactly is the atonement of Jesus Christ, and how can I receive its blessings? Another youth in Utah asked, One thing I have always wondered and never been able to find my answer to is how do I access the atonement? Is all I have to do is just ask God for the atonement to take place in my life? Could I? Uh, may Please I, start. May I try? We need a couple hours on yeah, this one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're, we're, we're not going to make it through on this one. Uh, there couldn't be a more important question. First thing to do is to get a few facts straight. The atonement was something Jesus Christ did. It's not a thing itself. He atoned for our sins and he paid the price to allow us to be forgiven and to be resurrected, all right? So it's what he did that qualified him to give us forgiveness, to, to change our hearts. And, and it, it's the Holy Ghost doing that. It's not the atonement as if it's a thing itself. You with me? The atonement is something the Savior did, okay? And the Father has given him, because of that, a great sacrifice that he made for us, the power to forgive us. And so when you feel forgiveness, that's not the atonement. That's the Savior giving you a feeling of forgiveness because of the atonement. That's, that's a, a very important distinction to make. It, it's very common for us to hear the atonement talked about as an abstraction, as if it were freestanding out in the middle of the field. It's, it's always an extension of the Savior. It's, it's, his, it's, it's his act. It is doctrinally incomplete to speak of the Lord's atoning sacrifice by shortcut phrases such as the atonement or the enabling power of the atonement or applying the atonement or being strengthened by the atonement. These expressions present a real risk of misdirecting faith by treating the event as if it had living existence and capabilities independent of our Heavenly Father and His Son, Jesus Christ.